This video will guide you through the steps required to service your American Beauty solder pot. Always use extreme caution and never attempt to service your solder pot without first confirming that it is unplugged and completely cooled. In this video tutorial we will cover both thermostat and heating element replacements. The knob for the solder pot can be removed using a standard 1 Allen hex head wrench. You will need to turn the solder pot over to begin the disassembly process. You will notice that there are three small screws that are used to attach the base cover plate to the bottom of the solder pot base. These screws are easily removed by using a Phillips or crosshead style screwdriver. With the base cover plate removed we now have access to the main assembly bolt and the wiring connections. As you remove the ceramic wire nuts you might want to consider using colored electrical tape or some other method of identification to aid in the reassembly process later on. Just as a point of reference the component being disconnected here is the inline fuse holder assembly. Now let's remove the main assembly bolt including spacer washers and tensioning spring located in the middle of the base plate using a standard or straight head style screwdriver. Prior to removing the base from the solder pot you will need to separate the element and the thermostat lead wires from the power cord and the run light. Once all of the necessary wires have been separated you will be able to remove the base from the solder pot along with the solder pot casing, ring, and thermostat assembly. Notice that the thermostat assembly is attached directly to the inside of the solder pot casing ring. We will need to remove the nameplate to give access to both sides of the thermostat mounting bolt. Using your Phillips head screwdriver, remove the four screws that are holding it in place. Two of the most common causes of thermostat failure are oxidation of the electrical contacts or forum matter which can prevent current flow between them, or electrical contacts arc together causing excessive thermal overshoot. The head of the mounting bolt has been ground down at the factory so you will need to loosen the nut located on the inside of the casing in order to remove the old thermostat. This can be accomplished using either a wrench or a standard pair of pliers. The harsh operating environment along with extreme heating and cooling over time may cause the mounting bolt to become seized in the thermostat assembly making it a little more difficult to remove. With the bolt out the thermostat is easily removed from the solder pot casing. Your new thermostat replacement parts package will contain a new thermostat along with two new insulated lead wires with crimped on quick connect tabs and a new mounting bolt and nut. As we attach the lead wires to the new thermostat assembly be sure that you have the leads going in the right direction as shown here. If the tabs are tight feel free to use a soft mallet to tab them securely into place. Before attempting to mount the new thermostat on the casing ring the stop tabs on the upper thermostat plate and on the adjusting shank should be positioned so that they are located opposite of each other to match the cutout on the casing ring. From inside the casing ring place the thermostat shaft into this cutout keeping the casing and thermostat mounting holes aligned with each other. Next take the mounting bolt and going from the outside insert the bolt through the casing and thermostat assembly. Holding the bolt and thermostat in place turn the casing ring for better access to apply the nut to the mounting bolt. With a pair of pliers hold the nut in place while you tighten the mounting bolt firmly with your Phillips head screwdriver. Now bend the tab slightly away from the casing's inner wall to prevent the possibility of arcing or electrical shorting between the thermostat and the casing ring. Now we can reassemble the name plate to the casing ring using the four small Phillips head screws that we removed earlier. Although it is not required you may find this task easier to accomplish if you file or grind the head of the mounting screw flat before you attempt to reassemble the name plate and the casing ring back together. There are two cartridge type heating elements located in the crucible body and held in place with screws which can be loosened with your standard or straight head style screwdriver. The heating elements should then slide freely from the crucible. If they have seized in place it may be necessary to remove the insulator shell and use a wooden dowel rod and soft mallet to remove them. Once the old elements have been removed they can be replaced with the new ones. We recommend that you always replace both of the heating elements when either one or both of them have expired. Be sure that you have the insulator shell back in place before you install the new heating elements. When the new elements are properly located secure them in place by retightening the element retaining screws. These screws should be snug only. Over tightening them may cause damage to your new heating elements. Next you will want to pair up the element leads First joining together one lead wire from each of the heating elements, then joining together the remaining pair of wires in the same manner, keeping the two pairs of wires separated from each other. This will make it easier to identify and locate the wires as we reassemble the solder pot. When you are putting the solder pot casing, ring, and thermostat assembly back on the crucible, 
you will want to make sure the thermostat is located on center between the two heating elements. When positioning the wires for reassembly, remember the base has three holes besides the main assembly bolt hole in the center. Which wires to place in these three holes will be explained in detail to help minimize any confusion. This first wire is one of the thermostat leads and it will be placed in the first of the three base holes by itself. The other thermostat lead and one set of the heating element leads previously paired together will be joined and placed in the second of the three base holes. This other set of paired heating element leads will be placed in the last of the three base holes provided for wiring. Now let's begin assembling the base and the lead wires together as described. Take your time making sure that you are putting each of the wires or wire sets into the correct holes in the base. When you have all of the wires properly in place the result should be the same as what is shown in this still shot. Next you should verify that the lead wires have been fully drawn into the base holes and make sure the base is properly seated onto the casing ring. The main assembly bolt including the spacer washers and tensioning spring can now be put back into place. It is best to begin tightening by hand to eliminate the possibility of cross threading the bolt. Using a screwdriver tighten the bolt only until you have light tension on the spring. Next turn the pot over and make certain that the casing ring assembly is properly seated on the base. The casing ring should be resting on the notched portion of the five bosses that are equally located around the base. When you are certain that you have everything properly aligned carefully turn the solder pot over again. Now you may finish retightening the solder pot's main assembly bolt and begin the process of rewiring the solder pot's component parts together. We will begin by joining one of the inline fuse holder leads and one of the power cord leads together, adding a ceramic twist on wire nut and tightening until snug. Next we join the other inline fuse holder lead with the single thermostat lead located in hole number one, again adding a ceramic wire nut and tightening until it is snug. Ceramic wire nuts are being used because of the heat that may build up in this inner portion of the base area of the solder pot during use. Next we will join one of the run light leads with the remaining thermostat lead and the pair of heating element leads located in hole number two, twisting these four wires together and again adding a ceramic wire nut and tightening until it is snug. And now we will take the remaining run light and power cord leads and join them together with the second pair of heating element leads located in hole number three, twisting these four wires together and adding the final ceramic wire nut and tightening until it is snug. Make sure there are no loose or stray wires and carefully reposition all of the wires flatly against the inside surface of the base. The base cover plate can now be reassembled to the base by first realigning the three holes in the cover plate with the three corresponding bosses in the base. With all of the wires properly secured beneath the base cover plate, we will replace the three small base cover plate retaining screws, tightening each of them down securely with our Phillips or crosshead style screwdriver. When all of the screws have been securely tightened, we can turn the solder pot right side up and reattach the thermostat control knob using our standard 1 16th Allen hex head wrench. We hope that this video is helpful for servicing your American Beauty solder pots.